you remember that then? Stars of Time, Western Supermare. We had the Akira bike there. Yeah, we had two brilliant cosplayers with us as well. They yeah. look absolutely fab. Anyway, welcome to Popeye Studios, episode 12. Yeah. Yeah. We thought it was about time we had a little chat about cosplay, anime, and also do a little bit more about the Akira bike because we've had loads of good comments on it. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little feature on the Akira bike. Not so much the technical information because we no. covered that in episode four. Yeah, like it was, bikes yeah. and birds. Um, so it'll be more kind of how we created it and why we yeah, created it. Yeah, and a little few really. shots of it yeah. out and about. That's going to be at the end of the show. Yeah. But first, we're going to talk about cosplay. And for people that don't know, if you've never been to an event, because we know we're getting more and more people looking at us now, yeah. we thought we'd better just tell you a little bit about what it is first. Now, some people think it's just basically some very strange people dressing up in costumes. It isn't. It's... It is people dressing up, but it, there is so much more to it than That's that. That's right. It's like an art form where yeah. you build your own costume. Some people make them themselves. Some people have help with some of it, and some people would just buy the whole costume. And then while you're at the event, you basically, instead of being yourself in the costume, you're actually acting like the character of the costume that you're in. And some cosplayers take two or three costumes to the event, and they'll change during the day, and they'll look completely different because they'll be being Yeah, and they, that they are what make the event. I mean, we can take as many props as we want to an event, but it's the interaction between the props the and cosplay the cosplayers, and, the and it's, people that's what at the creates event. the magic, and yeah. that's what Comic Cons are all about. Yeah, and it's so um, cool when you see a kid walking up, say, Spider Man or Superman or Batman or. Yeah. You know, or even like a teenager interacting with Harley, Harley Quinn. It's just, it makes their day, it makes the whole event feel not like the normal world and the everyday and the boring stuff of life that goes on. So it's interesting. On it's today's important. show, we're actually going to feature two professional cosplayers. Yep, yep, that's um, right. So yep. first one we're going to introduce you to is Vanquish Time. Have a look at this. Hi there, my name's Kez. I'm also known online as Vanquish Time Cosplay. I started cosplay back in 2015. Costuming has been something I've always wanted to do and I saw in America that they did Comic Cons and all these amazing costumes. So I looked up the most local kind of venues I could that would put on a Comic Con and I found one in Bristol. So I dressed up as Harley Quinn for that one um, from Suicide Squad. So. As I mentioned, I love to costume anyway, so any sort of excuse to dress up is absolutely fantastic to me. It lets me express myself. It's also kind of my mask, so if I'm having an anxiety day, I know that if I go into a certain character, such as Harley Quinn, I can be a bit more crazy and show off the more fun side of my personality. If it's an anime character, say like Anika Catgirl, I can be a bit more cutesy. So it's a way for me to express myself in lots of different ways. Wonder Woman is one of my favorites because we made the costume and that was a lot of fun. Harley Quinn is my first one, so obviously like she's the best one because I've constantly adapted her through the years. And my favorite anime one has to be Jinko. Uh, from Darwin Romper, she's just crazy and I just love the big hair and the school uniform and it's just typical kind of anime style. I really like Guardians of the Galaxy and I love Drax, he just makes me laugh, uh, Dave Bautista, he's brilliant. Um, as for anime, I really, <laughs> I'm really into Pokemon so I absolutely adore Pikachu. So I have like tattoos and onesies and inflatable costumes and teddies and plushies of Pikachu. He, he's my all time favourite from when I was a child. I love anime because it's very expressive. I love the graphics. I think it's really, really artistic and I love the way that they portray the characters and the characters are so over the top and they are just so much fun to cosplay as well. Thank you so much to Vanquish Time Cosplay for that. It was absolutely We're going to see another brilliant. one later, aren't we? Yep, we've got another yeah. one coming up a bit later in the show. In episode 10, we showed you a little bit about some of the tech we got when we started doing YouTube. And we've yeah. had a lot of questions about this we little thing. We had about, about this little thing. gadget here. This, was, this is the Osmo DJI Osmo Pocket. And, and it is a pretty amazing camera. Now, we asked ourselves the question... Is this is the, the best, best Comic Con camera, camera ever? ever? Yeah, that was yeah, that a big question. question, like that giant one. Well, it was a big question because we have been using this for comic cons. Yeah, because you might just think, well, why not just use why not just use 
that a phone or right. this and take your phone out and just point your phone but your yeah. phone doesn't have any stabilization so, so all the pictures were donka 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 yeah. donka so what I, Not you've got good. to do is you've got to put your phone in this and then you've got to set it all up and yeah we thought this would work all working and to be honest they're it, good good photos we got from it but it was a lot of faffing around yeah when you're kind of busy and all of that can be replaced by that you know it's got all the stabilization actually in the head that's yeah. kind of all there. It's really light. It's, it's really small. Yeah, it goes for a couple of hours on, yeah, on a charge. On and even if it does run out of charge, you can plug the like power bank things into it. Yeah. So you can actually yeah. run it for all day. And also, um, this, you can send a photo to your phone. Yeah, so this is like a little it's accessory really cool. that you buy with it. You, you, it's like a Wi-Fi module. And then it's just, we've actually got it connected at the moment. So you can see, if I point that at Mrs. Breaker, there we go. Ta -da! It kind of all is connected hello, to the phone with hello. no wires. Now you don't have to use it like this. Obviously, you can control the camera from this completely. Yeah. And it's, if you're a bit myopic, because the screen on the back of the camera, yeah, is the like screen is a little bit tiny. And if you've got chunky fingers as well, it can be a little bit um, hard, to control. hard to control. But then this little gadget as well lets you control yeah, through so the buttons. Yeah, this is a little back, so you can like zoom, move it up and down, so it go into different modes. Yeah, and it's got thing. like a tracking mode, so you can walk around and you can kind of point it at yourself. And then basically what can happen is then it can follow you as you move around, it can move around. Yeah. Um, but the other you thing can is flip the screen as well. Yeah. So, so it kind of flips around. So, so that'd can... be good if you're a vlogger. So one of the really, really cool features of this, it can actually follow objects. So if you were walking around a Comic Con, you could get it to track something or follow something. So I've set it up here. We've drawn it. You literally draw a square around the object you want and you can see that it will actually follow the object. Now it's quite bright with the lights here, but you can see, I think Mrs. Breaker is going to try and attempt to move. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, well, there's certain things that you can't follow. Okay. So is it the ultimate combo? Come on, camera, ever! I reckon. Well, I don't know. What do you we think? We couldn't find many negatives, to be we fair. We can't, actually. Obviously, you've got to have a phone and a camera, so it's added expense, but... Well, you don't have to have a phone. It's very chunky. You well, most people have, have a phone. phone anyway. Yeah, but I mean, it runs on a little micro SD card. You just plug yeah. it in the side, take it out, plug it in your computer, and you can edit it. Quality is amazing. It's yeah. running at... It's not quite full 4K, but I think it's like half 4K, 2.7 or whatever it yeah. is. I don't know. Um, but it's HD, which is good enough for most people. Um, so, yes. Answer it's the question. pretty sturdy. Doesn't yeah. cost a lot of money either, really. Yeah. Um, but the difference is you just don't get those bouncy, bouncy, bouncy shots that you get <laughs> when you use your phone. And that's yeah. what makes all the difference. So, so it looks pro. Is it the best Comic-Con camera Is ever? it the best Comic-Con camera ever? Yes. Big thumbs up. We think it is. Yeah. So I think we need to go to our next cosplayer. This is Rose Magpie. <laughs> Hi, my name's Rose and I go by Rose Magpie Cosplay. I actually started cosplay um, as a kid, basically my mum likes to dress up, she used to go to Star Trek conventions and things like that before she had me, and she always dressed me up um, throughout my childhood. Then one day I was just watching cartoons and anime and things like that and I thought, God, they dress so cool, I wish I could dress like that every day or if, you know, clothes like that were sold in shops. Well, cosplay to me is a form of escapism. I find it really, really comforting to be all these incredibly powerful characters. If you feel like you are not a confident person in real life, then cosplay can bring that out of you because you are not perceived to the world as yourself. You are the character that you are portraying. My favorite cosplay is definitely either Elia the Huntress from Skyrim because who doesn't love a woman in armor with a sword? That's it's pretty badass and war paint as well and technically she's a werewolf which is a whole other thing I won't go into. She's my favorite female cosplay but I also tend to favor cosplaying men so I cosplay Hawks from My Hero Academia and he's this character with huge red wings and he's just oh my god I love him so much. <laughs> Anime is this incredibly artistic cartoon. The characters that they create are so well in depth and you become so emotionally invested. If, for example, if your favorite character in a live action show or movie dies, you will still see that actor again. But if they die in an anime, you will never ever see that character or that design ever again. So you get 
a lot more emotionally invested. I tend to pick favorites within each category, so like you'd have a favorite in horror, a favorite in comedy. Overall, if I was to suggest something for people to watch, it would be either My Hero Academia, which is a very popular one and is quite good for all the family. There is also one called The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. It is hilarious and it takes a mirror up to all the anime stereotypes and it's very self-aware, very meta, and it's just overall an absolutely hilarious anime. Thank you, Rose Magpie Cosplay, for that. Um, what we're going to do over the next few months is feature loads of other cosplayers, event organisers, prop builders. So we know loads of people, we're going to be ringing you up saying, would you like to be on the show? But also, if you're out there, maybe you're in a different part of the world to us, but you're involved in the cosplay or event yeah. industry, get in touch because we'd love to feature you. We'd love to hear from people in different countries. That would be so cool. At the beginning of the show, we mentioned that we're going to run a feature on the Akira bike. Now, yeah. In episode four, Bikes and Birds. Bikes and Birds. We did a little bit of feature on the technical side of it. And yeah, how it steers and yeah. All and what stuff we just thought we'll do is we're going to introduce you to the idea of why it was created yeah. and what why kind did of you make it. You know what sort of genre it fits inside of. Yeah, which and is that anime. Brings us on to anime. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, of course. Well, it's just anime is all comes from Japan. So in Japan, they have a lot of graphic novels, and I found a fact the other day that. The average adult buys 15 graphic no novels every year. But anime is huge in Japan, though, isn't it? It is it's huge. It's not like it him. It's not huge. like reading a comic book, is it? No, no, they're not so like comic not books. Like... They cover a much greater subject range than yeah. cover books, comic books do. And um, so they can cover everything from like ancient myths and legends and stories to modern stories, soap operas, novels, and also a little bit of sci-fi, obviously. And from the sci-fi ones, they then brought in anime, which means animated in Japan. Yeah. And it's just basically taking manga those. Means copy, copy comic book doesn't yeah it? like taking the manga which is the comic book as it were or the graphic novel and then animating it whether that's by computer or by hand-drawn mm. uh, comic uh, film so most of them cover very big dramatic scenes and substances and, and ideas and they're beautifully drawn and they're very colorful if you're a visual person or into the arts they're just fabulous to watch which of course brings us on to the akira movie doesn't it yes. very famous yeah uh, famous it, movie yeah cyberpunk dystopian movie yeah that's right yeah. and it was by um a chap called uh, kashira otomoto who was actually a manga artist to start with and yeah. then went on and, and developed this whole film and also tv series so it kind of inspired by all this we wanted to create the akira bike yeah and the, the the Akira bike is, of course, it's the famous, it's the lead, if you like, motorcycle in, in the Akira film. Yeah. Uh, now, there have been some amazing bikes created across the world. And they're beautiful. Beautiful construction. Now, bear in mind, this is a comic book motorcycle. So it's kind of physically impossible. If you just made it the yeah. way it was drawn, it wouldn't really you, work. You couldn't it wouldn't do go it. around corners, no. wouldn't whatever. It couldn't do lots of things. So yeah. you have to kind of take those ideas and then try to bring that into the real world. And a few artists have done that, and they've done it all beautiful replicas yeah. hats as close off. as you can hats get. off to them we didn't want to do that no. we didn't want to produce a replica we wanted to produce something different and the akira bike came about when we met um chap that we usually meet at the comic cons that yeah. is around in a mobility scooter and he's, he's brilliant he always meets us and chats with us about our props and he said to me one day wouldn't it be cool if i could have a mobility scooter that was just cool looking and at the time i was thinking about building the akira bike in the sort of you know the way my brain works the two just got mixed together and all of a sudden we came up with what we've got now, which actually is the world's first Akira mobility scooter. So it's got four wheels when you press the button, two yeah. wheels come down and obviously it's got the other two wheels. So it can be ridden as a bike with well, just the two wheels. It's an wheels. electric motorcycle, so it's in all sense and purposes, it's an electric motorcycle. That's and as right. you said, when you press the button, two little wheels come down from the side. It then puts four wheels on the ground, computer takes over, limits it to a whopping four miles an hour, which <laughs> makes it road legal here in the UK, meets all the requirements. Yeah, so we got a little bit of footage about yeah. how we made it, a few early snaps. Originally we had a slip wheel system on it, Yeah, it didn't that really a, work in the rain. No, so. it was an idea of instead of putting a chain drive on it, because I wanted to make it as simple as possible, it didn't work though, but we experiment with these things. So it's actually got a standard chain drive now to yeah. the electric motor. So it's a simple um, scratch-built frame, yeah. loads of bits of aluminium well, on it. Well, have a look at the images. And have a look at the images. And don't forget to subscribe, share and hit the bell. Ding! Bye. Bye.